between our chief legal analyst, Dan Abrams, and Mary McCord, a former federal prosecutor who's also a senior official in the National Security Division of the Justice Department. Dan, let me begin with you. A lot of redactions in this affidavit, but, but have you seen enough now to, to conclude whether or not pre former President Trump should be indicted? Uh, no, N not in terms of whether he should be indicted or whether he will be indicted. He could be indicted. There's definitely enough here to potentially indict him. When you look at the words of the statutes and you look at the actions, there definitely could be an indictment here. The most important part that's redacted, though, relates to the obstruction. And that, to me, is what this all is going to come down to. And it's not just an obstruction of justice charge. It's exactly what actions were taken to thwart this investigation, to thwart getting back those documents. That could also determine whether there are charges in connection with the other statutes there, well, separate, intentionality. Separate from the, from the statutes dealing with classified documents, if the president knew he had the documents and refused to return them, that's obstruction under those statutes, correct? It absolutely could be, right? It could be. Um, but the question, again, comes back to the level of intentionality of the conduct in deciding whether to indict, right? There, there are two separate questions. Y you could indict. Uh, there's no doubt that you look at the words of the statute, you look at the actions, and people are going to say, well, of course there could be an indictment. The question of whether they will indict is a, is a separate question. And let me bring that to you, Mary. Does it make a difference that we're dealing with a former president here? I worked in the government. If I had taken home these documents, any doubt that I would be prosecuted? Uh, no doubt you would have been prosecuted based on assuming intentionality, as Dan has said, and I would have been too um, uh, if I had taken these kind of documents when I left the department. But I do think that, um, you know, we there's still the investigation is still ongoing. The, as, as Pierre indicated in the opening, there is still the potential for other criminal Confederates and other information. And so, you know, we don't want to jump too far ahead. It's a I do think it matters if this is the present, though. It's... Yeah, it, it, I'm sorry. No, go, go ahead. Finish your point. Oh, I was just saying, with respect to your question about does it matter that it's the former president? Yes, of course it does. This is super sensitive. It has ramifications beyond just criminal prosecution. It has already, of course, the, pres the former president's allies are calling it, you know, a political gamesmanship. Of course, you know, if you look at the actual evidence that we can see in the affidavit and you look at the facts that seem to be uncontested, it doesn't look political to most objective observers, but that doesn't mean that it won't be called that. And these are things that the department has to really take seriously and also has to consider what this means for the future. Um, that doesn't mean I think that there won't be indictment. I just don't know. Uh, but I think it, the fact that this is a former president is very significant. It's also significant that there's a national security interest here. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you about. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. It's a crime to keep any government documents after you leave government service. But what about the fact that so many of them were labeled, were classified, so many of them were even top secret, 25 documents top secret. We've heard this argument from some of the president's allies. His lawyers didn't make it. They had this blanket authority to declassify all documents. Well, two points on that. One is that in the unredacted portions of the affidavit, we see that that argument was, uh, some of that argument was presented to the judge before he signed the search warrant. The argument was made that the president has the authority uh, to declassify documents that because there was an attached letter from the president's lawyer advising the Department of Justice of that and asking the Department of Justice to present that to the judge. And then there was also um, a reference to Cash Patel, one of the former president's senior aides, saying he had, in fact, declassified to everything. So that argument, in short, was presented to the judge who still signed the warrant. But to your, to your other point, there is a whole separate interest here in protecting national security. And that's why the director of national intelligence announced a day or two ago that the intelligence community will launch a full assessment of the national security, potential national security harm from these documents. That means not only uh, how sensitive are they if they were to get into the hands of people unauthorized to have them, it means, do we have confidential human sources at risk? Do we have intelligent co intelligence collection methods at risk that our adversaries might now be able to, to learn about if they obtain these documents? So quite apart from the criminal investigation, there's an enormous interest in figuring out who had access to these. This is a, this is a, a location where apparently these, this national defense information was scored stored willy-nilly in various places in at Mar-a-Lago, places that potentially visitors to Mar-a-Lago, including foreign visitors, could have had access. Mary McCord, Dan Abrams, thanks very much.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.